So, it's the right time. We'll call the meeting to order. Um, I'm Councilor David Murphy, Councilor Ryan O'Donnell. Council, I gotta remember not calling Maureen Toll, Maureen Carney. Carney. What a good Irish name, all the same. Um, and it's under the new. Irish here. There you go. So, uh, under the new charter for organizational meetings, the eldest councilor calls the meeting to order and uh, then we elect a chair. And since we've worked out that I'm the eldest councilor, I get to call us to order. So uh, I have to announce that there's audio and video recording as well as notes. So word for word, you'll be in the record. The, then we have to approve our meeting schedule. That's true. So on your nomination for chair. I'd like to uh, nominate Councillor Murphy as chair. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Being three, I guess there are no other nominations, unless you want to get another nomination. Right. Well, uh, thank uh, you. Uh, <coughs> I don't Now we get to approve our meetings. Which is first Mondays, or second Mondays, and we're at five now, five to seven. And when we get to October, it's a holiday, but we could move that one when we get closer. That work for you to pick a day when you get closer to that. <coughs> so, do we have a motion on our meeting schedule? I move to accept. Second. Uh, Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. And now, if we can, um, I would like to take Mr. Verson, who I asked to run over today. He was um, asked, uh, or Mayor asked to appoint him to the planning board, and the planning board is a pretty important permit granting board. So, I invited him today so that we could. Uh, pass the recommendation back to the mayor's office and maybe get it on the next agenda and get him in place so the planning board can operate at full capacity. Um, we've, it was handed to us, it used to be in a, a committee on appointments and valuations, and it was merged in with us. We lost our claims, but we got appointments. So this is the first time we've done this. So uh, <laughs> Attorney Burson is nominated to the planning board by the mayor. And, uh, and typically, reappointments don't always come through us they go right to council if the if the chair of the committee says they're a good person participating, but we typically see the first person. So, um, do you have? Uh, we'll let, would you like to make a statement to us, or we'll then ask you some questions if we have any? Or my name is Alan Verson. I've lived in Northampton for I don't know, thirty some thirty five years, um, and I'm willing to be on the planning board. It would be interesting, and I'll answer any questions. Should I tell you something about my background? Sure. Okay. So I'm, I'm a practicing attorney in town, have been since I got to Northampton. And I'm also involved in a fair amount of real estate that I own and manage myself. And I've done some development of real estate um, of various kinds, residential, commercial, condominium. Um, and. Uh, my law practice consists um, largely of personal bankruptcy work and uh, some real estate and other related things. And um, that's me. Any I just want to thank you, uh, Mr. Bresson, just because we know that uh, this is one of the heavier lifting of our boards and committees and really appreciate your willingness to serve on the board. I'm sure you'll bring a great um, wealth of knowledge. Well, I hope so. Mm -hmm. right. any, any particular questions? No, just to say thank you as well. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? And I would entertain a motion to appoint or recommend. We just recommend. Well, I move that we recommend uh, Mr. Burson to. Uh, second. Okay. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. All right. And, and uh, thank you for serving on the planning board. Hope you find it stimulating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why is he laughing? <laughs> so this will come back to the city council for February 20th. Take care. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, we'll get it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And thanks yeah. for coming in tonight. We get this expedited because it's important they have their quorums there and get their business done on time. So. Okay. Thank you.
Uh, now we're going to approve some minutes, November 4th, November 18th, and then we didn't need any. I'll move those two sets as group for approval. There's actually three. Hmm? There's actually three. I'm sorry, I'll move all three sets. All three sets. All, three sets. all right, and I'll, I'll second that that you were at those meetings. You were not at those meetings. Um, so no discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 You want to abstain? I'll abstain. You weren't at the meetings. All right, the next item is 281 through 2812, which is to add the storm water flood control utility. Council sent it to us October 3rd to us, to the Youth Commission, and Edlin. And the Youth Commission responded, and I just found out from Councilor Adams that Edlu is done with it. But it went back, it went back to DPW, correct, Thank with you. Councilor Adams's amendments. And it was my understanding that DPW had not met and dealt with those amendments yet. Is that the case? I don't know that they. I don't know. I don't know that they've done that. I don't, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, the last conversation I had just for information with uh, the chair of the board was that he hadn't, he said, told me that he hadn't actually seen those himself. So I don't know if in the meantime, that was a good mm -hmm. few weeks ago, if he had seen those amendments. Mm -hmm. Because I would be uncomfortable doing anything here till they come back right. from DPW with their feelings about those different amendments and see what happens there. And what I was going to suggest, and I checked with Councilor Dwight about that, is that we meet again this month, have a public hearing after DPW has dealt with that, and then screen the final proposal, and then officially we'll make whatever changes come out of DPW in the public hearing, and then send it back to Council for April so that um, we wouldn't really deal with it any further tonight. We, Even for March. For for uh, we deal with it. Yeah, our but second. Yeah. And we'd, we'll try to send it back. And try March. and send it back. Yeah. I think they want to deal with it. In, deal with it in March and get it over with. So I'm sorry. For some reason, I'm a month ahead of myself here. Um, so I asked Mary this afternoon to check and see what dates may be available that don't conflict with other council activities. So I don't know when the. DPW or DPW's meeting, but I found Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, February 24, 5, and 6. Okay, we're talking about having a hearing. Should we also have a bunch of content? 24 is Monday. So Monday, Tuesday, 24, 5, and 6. We're talking about as a five o'clock meeting. Or do we it would probably we probably want to do it at six because it's a public event. Okay, not the tw not at not on the Wednesday, please. So okay. Monday or Tuesday. Well, I've got a Wednesday. Tuesday would be the twenty fifth. Would be the best day for me. That's fine. Twenty fifth for you at six, okay. and then what we'll do is check with DPW. But, I would. But there, the only problem I see with that is you used to have finance meetings the fourth Tuesday of every month, but mm -hmm. no one on finance has asked me to book any meetings yet. Right. Um, and right now that's open. Mm -hmm. And we haven't actually had a off council finance meeting in a very long time. So um, I will certainly uh, take the responsibility to check both with DPW tomorrow to make sure. I'm thinking they will have cycled a meeting by then. <laughs> you would think between now and the 25th they would get together and just let them know that it's our desire to make that a public hearing and deal with it with their changes so that it's everybody's weighed in on it. Because even, isn't tonight, or when's Ward 7's meeting? Right. Tonight. tonight. So there's yet one more meeting that's happening on it. So. I was just asking if maybe a 6 could, if we could be pushed a little bit. I have a 5.30 meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's regularly scheduled on so that Friday. Right. I mean, I don't want to screw us up, so yeah. well, no. I'll leave there. I'll leave early and hmm. get your six fifteen. Maybe we could well, schedule it. We can. We can even make it. Um, I don't want to push it too late. I we mean, could we make it six thirty. Would that give you? 
I just five is hard if you're having the public come. Yes. Because they're right. just getting out of work. Yeah. So six thirty for the twenty fourth? Twenty fifth. Yeah. And I will um I will get hold of DPW to confirm with them it's okay. And then I'll just because we haven't booked any finance, I'll let and I Susan think and the mayor know that that's when we're doing it and they haven't had anything to even hold a meeting for, so. And again, because it's a hearing, we might want to, um, I don't know if this is going to be a regular practice, post it as a regular council, council, meeting. council meeting or special. In case. Concurrent council meeting. Yeah, in case right. more of our. If two more show up. Then. Probably yeah. will. Yeah, they probably will, so we'll post it. Do you want this posted as a city council public meeting? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Chambers Economic, you know, the Stormwater Task Force. We have been, we are very happy with the current ordinances before you. We support all of Councilor Adams' proposed amendments, and you know, we we're now more than a year down this road, and I hope you can get it in place in March. But, so I, I, I unequivocally support the current proposal and hope that the council will put it in place so we can build the citizens of Northampton as soon as possible. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> but my, my compatriots may have other words for the same thing. Do you get that, Mary? Bill, as soon as possible. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Any other? Uh, uh, I would, no, I would, I would encourage you to for sure be back oh, yeah, on I'll that back last February. Tuesday so that we can. That would, we had. Um, you gotta, you got to do the whole thing, though, and stand up and announce yourself so that the folks watching this at home will yeah. adjust your wardrobe and <laughs> announce yourself. Is it being, is it being video? So, my name is Suzanne Beck. I'm. Um, here tonight representing the Greater Northampton Chamber of Commerce and the work of our Stormwater Task Force and um, Economic Development Committee. Um, as part of the process, uh, we held two forums for commercial property owners um, in December um, and were able to speak to about 35 property owners at, at each um, at those forums combined. So it was a night, it was a good attendance and it was uh, many of the larger property owners that participated. We, Terry Culhane, did a very thorough explanation. And I thought what was interesting is that the feedback from that group was singularly focused on um, the structure of the benefits, uh, or the credits, sorry, not benefits, the credit system. So the implication was that they accepted the rationale for the stormwater utility and just wanted a little more clarification on how the uh, credits would be structured, which I think is, uh, I understand that DPW has not tied that to the ordinance, um, but that whole process and that consideration is going to be an important one also for us to follow because as you know, many commercial property owners have made significant financial investments in the stormwater system to negate any further um, strain on the existing stormwater system, which of course we hope will get some relief through the utility. Um, but I wanted to share that feedback in addition to what we've been saying. And I'll come back in February, in the end of the month. Did you want to say something? Go ahead. Are you here for another item on our agenda? Or? No. Nope. Yeah. Just your sentence. Yes. <laughs> He's here for the same reason I object to what you me. <laughs> I'm, I'm Ed Etheridge of Northampton. I've been a Northampton resident for almost 40 years and a member of the chamber for almost 25 years. Uh, and I've been on this, uh, the chamber, uh, not on the city's task force, but on the chamber's uh, committee on the stormwater utility. Um, and uh, serving the role that I often serve, which is to read it. Um, and the changes that Councillor Adams uh, has proposed are uh, very useful not only for clarity, but to emphasize, I think, what the principles are that the Chamber uh, was trying to be supportive of some stormwater uh, things to make sure it, uh, it didn't get sidetracked to try and serve three or four separate uh, uh, purposes. Um, and so I think those uh, amendments do address that. And if I'm not able to be here in, in, uh, in a couple of weeks, I just want you to know that I'm very supportive of what Councillor Adams has put together. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Steve Elkins. I own uh, Webbs. I live in South Deerfield. Uh, we have a location on Service Center Road, and also we have a location in East Hampton as well. Um, I wanted to support Councillor Adams' amendments as well. Um, as a business owner, understand the need for the stormwater um, process and, uh, and, the, and the monies that need to be accounted for. Um, I think um, Council, uh, the, Mr. Adams' um, amendments do a nice job of focusing those dollars where they need to be spent. And that, as business owners, that's kind of what we understand the need uh, as the proposal's been laid out. Um, and we'd like those dollars spent there. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, and 
it's our hope that when it comes back from DPW, all of that will be incorporated in a final version that will give one more public hearing to and then move along. So thank you. Thank you all thank for you. coming. Hope to see you on the last Tuesday, but if not, you're on record. We lose our whole audience now. Nice day off. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Nice that to see you. Nice. That was not <laughs> recreating. All right. The <laughs> item number nine is amend chapter 16, Six subsection 4 6. All together. With regards to claims. Did that go to anybody else? Mary, or just to us? You. Went to parking. you going to hit me. All right, let me. Let me get that Sorry, I went to transportation. Actually, transportation is going to look at it next Tuesday. All right. So that's off our action list till they're done. That was the one that, um, at the last meeting of December, we voted to send it back to transportation. Oh, that's right. This that was Owens. Was, uh, that went in, the 312. It went in without going there, and then we asked to send it there. Both of them, yeah. Yeah, okay. So that one is going back to them, so that one waits. They'll look at it next Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And then the next one, that also is going to them. We haven't dealt with that yet. Which one are you talking about? So both item 9 and 10, 16 mm -hmm. subsection 4, 6, and um, 3, 12, 36, both went, they're on our agenda, but they came to okay. us and to parking TNP, and TNP hasn't met yet, so. Okay. okay. But, um, Councilor O'Donnell did uh, submit. Oh, that's right. You're chairing that, don't you? 312. No, no, I'm not chair. But that's You're on. There is no chair yet. Oh, because you haven't met yet. That's right. Okay. But you have some amendments at your desk that are about the 312 that yep. you've submitted? Mm-hmm. Yes. Is that, but that's not item 10, is it? That would be for item 10. It is. Okay. Yes. Because the parking meter locations. Are, oh, I see. Oh, I see. That's just the, the area, but it still uh, deals with the garage. Got it. So if you want, I can send those to transportation too for them to. Yeah. Work. Yeah. They should look at everything. So when it comes back with a recommendation, because okay. typically we we act last, and mm -hmm. everybody else makes recommendations, and then we're the one that actually mixes the whole thing into a final Okay. So we tend to not act on anything until everybody else that it was referred to has weighed in on it and made the recommendations, and then we deal with it then. So thanks for the sneak oh. preview. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's a little, little light reading for you. No, I saw, actually, if, it, if I might just make a quick comment, I do appreciate the changing of the, uh, divulging the reasons to yeah. explaining the reasons. That seems a little bit more appropriate. <laughs> easier, divulging. Easier to uh, explicate than that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good. Can I ask a question you. of the uh, council clerk? Sure. Uh, who do I, who should I send the, those amendments to for transportation and parking? Well, I'll include them when I publish the agenda on okay. Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. So, what we need for uh, item nine is a motion to continue that. I'll, con I'll move to continue that to our March meeting of March 10th. Yeah. March 10th. March 10th. Okay, second. I'm second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 And then a motion on item number 10 could, for the same reason, so TMP can wait. Second? Second. Okay, mm -hmm. discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, and now appointments to the planning board. We did. We actually did. Ms. We Brooks. did the first one at council. Right. But uh, I had to Brooks. put it on here because I published yeah. this before that council. Before the council meeting, meeting. right? So, she has already been appointed by suspension rules. Mm -hmm. Alan, we just did, mm -hmm. and he'll go to the next meeting with our mm -hmm. positive recommendation. Mm -hmm. And then the people that are going on the uh, comp compensation advisory board, mm -hmm. um, we have time on that because they don't they're not actually scheduled to meet anytime soon um, they're just usually in place because I think that gets done you know on election cycle mm -hmm. 
And so, being that there isn't another election for two years, they won't really be doing anything for a while. Well, this being a new um, duty of this committee, mm -hmm. uh, I guess my question is, do each of these people, have, they have to appear before this committee? Well, what, committee? what, what we've done, because I, have you ever been on the, I've been I was on, actually on this committee at one point. Yeah. But have, 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 I think you ever, well, you haven't, but have you ever been on appointments and evaluations? I was never on that committee, but as a member of the Housing Authority, I had to appear before mm -hmm. the committee mm -hmm. to get appointed. Yeah. What, uh, I was on it, I think, for two terms. Yeah. Councillor Labarge, myself, and Councillor Spector. Yeah. And what we would do often for a big group like this is split them up, and each of us would call a couple of them and do a telephone interview with them, because okay. it's kind of it's kind of hard to, to bring everybody in. We like to with like permitting, granting, permit granting boards like like the zoning board or Mr. Burson for the planning board. But for these, what I might suggest is we split them up, if anybody knows any of them, uh, or we just split them up and call them and give them a telephone interview. And, and then if past that we think somebody should come in, then we could recommend they come in, but otherwise, do it that way and just bring our recommendations back. Do we have a... Oh, oh, yeah. just say, that's okay to do rather than yeah. do it in a public setting? Um, to, to interview them, yeah, we would certainly discuss, do the, the, the discussion, you know, the research gathering, the interview uh -huh. could be done that way, but the, the, the actual deliberation would have to be done here. Uh -huh. um, but they, do we have, I mean, has there been, uh, and this could be something we'd consider as a as a committee, some standard set of questions for appointees that we um, follow? I mean, what's the protocol it, from that committee? Um, I'll check with Paul and see if since I have been there, they had developed any sort of standard list of questions for board members. Um, they didn't have one when I was on that committee. Mm -hmm. They did not have a standard list of questions. And I think a lot of it varied by what board they were going on or most of the actual, because these people come to us from the mayor's office, and the mayor's office typically has an application for being on a board or a committee or commission. You have a copy of all the Right, yeah. yeah. And so we have those, uh, but we would get those and then just interview off those. Well, I mean, I guess I'm, the reason I'm asking is um, it is understood that these posts are the mayor's appointments, mm -hmm. and so. It's not, these wouldn't be evaluative kind of questions that we'd be asking. I'm not really sure what, where we're going outside of our bounds, you know, I mean, short of... Um, I think, you know, all, all of these, it's just sort of our consent as, as part of the process, and thank goodness we're not the Senate here, where... You know, there's political agendas to play out on this person, you know, on these, these people. We're, for the most part, on evaluations, we were always really glad that we had a volunteer that wanted to put their time in on a city committee or something. Um, we, I, I can only ever recall one that backed one person who backed away because there was a counselor that basically didn't want to see them get appointed in all the time I've been here. Um, okay. So well, I, I would, the only thing I would just know, and you could chalk this up to being, to being mm -hmm. new, you know, probably can make lots of, of rookie, rookie mistakes and ask some questions, but um, I mean, this seems like a sensitive subject, you know, compensation of, of us, mm -hmm. or maybe not us, but the next council. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know if that's a consideration when we think about how to deal with this. Mm -hmm. Our phone interviews, you know, not to say they're inappropriate, but are they the right course for this particular? But, well, I session? would question whether or not, I mean, whether it's appropriate for us to be asking them anything. Mm -hmm. And that's why that I brought up the whole question about um, what has been the protocol for all appointments, mm -hmm. given that we defer to the mayor in terms of um, evaluating and uh, weighing the stack mm -hmm. of applications. It's mm -hmm. not as though we get to pick and choose mm -hmm. among and say, well, I think this person is more appropriate than that. I mean, it's assumed that if an appointment comes to us, that that person has been vetted by, you know, the mayor's office and those questions, and even interviewed. I mean, the, that interview has already happened. 
So I'm wondering, I know what what it says by ordinance is that we have to give our consent. I'm just not sure um, mm -hmm. what, what would be uh, grounds for for rejecting an applicant. Mm -hmm. um, I agree. And I, I, you know, I would agree with that in concept, but our role is to consent. Yep. And I, for one, would be uncomfortable with our consent without any sort of process whatsoever. Right. I mean, be that process, call them up and ask them what their favorite color is. At least communicate with them, which is why we do the telephone interview to call them and say, you know, on behalf of the city council, we're glad you volunteered for this. We're pleased the mayor has appointed you. You know, and part of our process is to call them for you know and particip participate in the process by confirming you. And um, the committee's asked me to call and just have a quick chat with you. And yeah. you know, and and if there's anything in the application that you want to follow up on, and then come back and say, okay, I've talked to this one, this one, and this one, and um, delighted they want to serve. They sound like very pleasant folks, and I would consent to the mayor's appointment. Um, if any of them want to come in here, I mean, they have the right to come and, and mm -hmm. come to a meeting. If any of them want to come in and speak on camera and in person, that would certainly be appropriate. But it had been my experience that most of them are very happy with the telephone interview and, are, and don't mind at all the fact that, you know, that they don't have to actually come and appear. Well, one reason I was asking about a process, too, is that um, it'll be with an art purview now, even though there doesn't seem to be an established process that came out of appointments and evaluation beyond just call them up, ask them, as you said, what their favorite color is, or whatever. Um, maybe there would be a way to just, um, it seems to me it would, the most appropriate thing in this case would be to give the applicant the opportunity to, um, to because we need to provide the consent, an applicant could uh, use the opportunity by meeting with us or expressing by a telephone or even mm -hmm. by a memo or something else. Um, whatever it is they'd like to say about the appointment and their mm -hmm. their, their experience or why they want to be on it, even, even if it's a copy and paste from the application mm -hmm. where the same question is asked. And then that it, what, what happens is at our city council meeting, we almost serve as the liaison. So while it's not a, in a public process that the appointment happens through the mayor, as it comes by our consent, what we can do then is express, because it's all telecast, um, what we've heard from this applicant and uh, mm -hmm. why we think they may be an appropriate appointment. So I'm just wondering why it can't be done similar to how it was just done through the planning board in a, in a public form like this. I hate, I hate to compel people as though we have subpoena power or something, but on the other hand, I think there's substantial public interest in mm -hmm. the composition and, of the um, and, part, and, and part of board. it would be very appropriate if part of the telephone contact was, do you want to come down and address the committee in full and be on TV and do the whole thing, mm -hmm. or are you happy with doing it this way? Um, and they're they're because for a lot of them. You know, we discovered it was a burden to actually come in, and where they've been vetted by the mayor's office and everything. Um, and certainly, if there was anything uh, that came out of the telephone interview that made your hair stand up and say, "Gee, I think I'd like my other committee members to meet with you," that's fine. But um, the for many of these, the the initial step of doing the phone interview, at least I feel, would be most appropriate if you. Not comfortable with that? No, oh, I, well, I just, I also just would observe that it's not just, um, it, it, it's, it's for public observance as well. You know, those who may wish to watch the video of it later, if, if they're even on video, hear the audio of it. Um, well, again, it, concern. it seems like for, it seems like it's not a requirement. Right? I mean, it's a requirement that they, that we, that we give consent. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I, and this was not always the practice because I was well into my term as part of the um, housing authority. I had already served a number of, you know, a couple of years before I was called before the Appointments and Evaluations Committee, which was a newly formed committee yeah. of, the, uh, of the city council to then evaluate um, my status as a, as a member of the, of the mm -hmm. housing authority. And I, I can actually 
comment a little on why they started doing that. Because I, I went through an appointment as assessor once where the whole thing happened during a council meeting. Mr. Remember Mr. Freightstern? Yes. Mr. He was mm -hmm. one of your board members. And um, so the council actually, because it's an election, um, they nominated Mr. Freightstern as well, and basically in the middle of the council meeting, they did our interviews and decided what to do with us and voted on it. And it was a very awkward, a very awkward thing for us and for the council. And so that's when they came up with the concept of uh, appointments and evaluations, where that would happen at a committee setting, mm -hmm. and then the committee would bring back a recommendation to the full council. And and it's also. It, it, showed, I mean, in the way that this has mm -hmm. matured over the years, that it's become a practice that if it's a reappointment, if a person has already been serving, then they don't need to come before the committee again, which is what had happened to me. I, you know, I was already serving, and then I was um, asked to appear yeah. before mm -hmm. the and committee. And if you'll recall, the first person that was on here tonight was an associate member of the planning board, and so they suspended rules at council and just went ahead and appointed them. And often, with reappointments, and appointments and evaluations used to do this as well. If the person comes highly recommended by the department liaison and the committee chair that yes, they've been good, yes, they've participated, you know, they, they, they show up to make quorum, they, they actually do the business of the committee in a reliable way, mm -hmm. then appointments and evaluations wasn't asking them to come and get interviewed again. They just said, you, you have a proven track record on the committee, oh, you know, and, and then went forward. Um, so that's why we started that process where they didn't even come here. I mean, I can hear, uh, one thing that we could do is we could invite, uh, you know, uh, each of these members to either come or to send us a memo if they choose not to come, you know, or if they can't find the uh, time on a, what is it, what day we're meeting, on a Monday night, mm -hmm. some of them might have to, you know, mm -hmm. juggle things or cancel other things in order to meet. Mm -hmm. Our time, and as it is, I think sometimes it has to be stressed that these are all volunteers. <laughs> Everybody's oh, volunteering, yeah. uh, so yeah, yeah. we don't want to make it more difficult for people to volunteer to do these yeah. necessary jobs. But no, inviting them, I think, would be, mm -hmm. and then those that come, because some may be really interested in actually mm -hmm. coming and speaking to us, and then those that, for whom it would be difficult, we could ask them to do something else, like either participate with a phone. Conversation? I think that's very. I think that'd be very wise to put the presumption <clears throat> on people's participation. And if someone has the inability to participate, then we can do a phone call as an exception, perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, Just if this seems to have a special public. Oh, well, I'm. I'm. Given your doubt, I am very happy because this is the first time we've done it. Let's ask them all to come in here and do our thing. Well, again, I think we could back. invite them. I don't. We, I don't think we want to give the impression that, that this is a requirement. No, we wouldn't that, want to. Yeah. And, okay. and for those that once we, if this is actually worked for the chair or for Mary, I don't know who's going to be actually calling and inviting each of these people. Mm -hmm. Well, back to my original suggestion that we split them up and we call them, mm -hmm. and we say we'd be delighted to entertain you on such and such a day at such and such a time to interview you for this. But I still would encourage, you know, do you want to send us something? Do you want to do a telephone interview? Or do you want to come yeah. in in person? Right. Um, See, that's seven people. And if we ask them all to come at six, I mean, at five o'clock, mm -hmm. and even if each of them only speaks for five minutes, that's after we've done all of our other interviews. That's, mm -hmm. they're, they're committing themselves already to close to an hour, mm -hmm. in addition to what other, yeah. whatever other that, 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 well, that's true, and you make a good point that they are volunteers and want to respect their time. That's why we, um, you know, that's why, and appointments and evaluations didn't always do it that way, but we grew into that process out of respect for them because for many of them, it's like, you know, I'm happy to do this committee work, but I just can't, given my schedule, get in here. So it really was not to, you know, circumvent any process other than no. making life easier for these people that were volunteering. Well, not only that, but I think even when I was on the other side of the table, being one who had to appear before yeah. the Appointments and Evaluations Committee, it seemed to me that the committee themselves were kind of like trying to find, well, you know, some questions to ask, like in order to do our job. I mm -hmm. mean, we, you know, it's almost like sometimes, you know, we've got to find something to ask. And I think we have to be careful about really what our, mm -hmm. 
uh, what our bounds are, what's appropriate in terms of that, in terms of yeah. what kinds of questions. Where the goal questions is to, to do a little bit of due diligence so we're not just rubber stamping everything comes from the mayor's office, but at the same time doing it in a way that's considerate, considerate to the applicant because they are, you know, their time is valuable and they're volunteering and... But what is it that we're looking for when, we're, when we say due diligence? What is it that we're trying to find out about these? Are we trying to find out whether it's an appropriate evaluation? I mean, a, appointment, whether there's something that the mayor missed? Or, I mean, so that's the part that's confusing to me. I'm not really sure what it is that we're supposed to be finding out. There is no, there is no specific threshold for that. We usually have the mayor's application and would ask a few questions relevant to that. And uh, it, it's just a matter of due diligence and having some com some contact with the applicant yeah. rather than just yeah. saying, well, if the mayor says it's okay, it's okay with us. There really is no particular threshold. And in the whole time that I did it, I cannot ever recall us saying one of the mayor's appointments was inappropriate. No. Well, we have heard that at the council floor level. Uh -huh. Well, I just think that um, in, a, in a way, since this affects the council or a future council, in a way, perhaps we shouldn't be all that involved in terms of grilling them. And, mm -hmm. um, we should or shouldn't? We should not. I don't you, don't, you don't think we should? or? I don't think we should. I mean, I, unless we have a clear role, unless right. there is some sort of mm -hmm. process, it, it seems kind of like we're, we're looking for some sort of things to ask or we're trying to find some way right. to counter what has become the the, um, the recommended it. Yeah. We're, we're trying to appear not to be rubber stamping. Mm -hmm. and and I just think, seems, mm -hmm. It I, is going to be, I mean, short of an egregious wrong, everything will be a rubber stamp of some sort. I just think that perhaps our role is, is to provide a, a public forum, and that is the confirmation process, that the, our contribution mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. and I think that the, to the degree that can be as public as possible is better. But in a yeah. sense, I mean, there are people who will be making a, a, a judgment on compensation that will affect future councils. So in a way, I mean, especially in that situation, what, what would we ask them? I mean, well, I, again, we should just stand back in a way. If we take this particular, there, that has its own complications. <laughs> but I think generally, if we make this, if we wanted to give, make this a public forum and serve as almost like the liaison to the public process for what would be an isolated mayoral appointment, then what we should do is have you know provide a forum for the appointee to say what they will rather than rather than address particular specific questions from us. And, but we should be clear about that. It should be written down. We're going to give you the opportunity to because um, as you said, a public process. Well, it could be a public as public a process as um, reiterating to the public that online you can see the application. The application is right there for anybody to view with each of the questions answered. Here you can see a picture. If, if we're tele uh, and this, Is this meeting uh, often telecast? Not really. It's, it's not, not tonight. Live. It's not. It's not but live. we could remind people that should they ever go to the open meeting of the whatever committee of planning board, you will be able to put a face to the name. Mm -hmm. So it's a, play, a way to remind, I guess, remind people that mm -hmm. everything's public. Yeah. These are all public meetings. You'll be able to see. This is the person who's been um, mm -hmm. And, and well, for, for right. us, um, to me it's sufficient if when we call the person's name off and you interview them on the phone or chatted with them, you can say I called them such and such an evening and invited them to come here if they was convenient for them to come mm -hmm. here and they said, well, I'd rather do a telephone interview and I asked them, you know, we discussed their qualifications and, and they, they seemed most pleasant and capable of doing the job and uh, so I suggest we move on with a positive recommendation and and we would step through all of them you know and we report in or have them here in person if it was their choice to come here that we talk to them in person and, and then make a recommendation on them but uh, that that still in my opinion is sufficient for for men for many of these I think the exception would be perhaps the permit granting boards, as I said, the ones that, uh, like the Board of Public Works or um, the Planning Board or the Zoning Board or one of those permit granting boards mm -hmm. or the License Commission or one of those. Why? Just for my own understanding. Um, 
because they they have a really high public profile, and those folks, you know, the, the permit granting process affects a lot of folks in the city, um, and having members of those bodies that you know can't keep a focus on the process and their role in the process. I mean, you know, the, the particularly. Zoning and planning is, is an exercise of the police powers of the city. And that has a direct effect on a lot of people. And so we always tend to take care for people we're putting on permit granting boards and in, in the process because they do have a great, a great effect on the citizens' rights to do things. Uh -huh. And um, So if, if there were something, for example, that came across in an interview that we might have with an applicant for the uh, zoning board of appeals mm -hmm. or something that really showed that that person would be highly objectionable and it was something that just didn't come out in the interview that the mayor had or was mm -hmm. on the written application. I, I can't imagine what it would be. Mm -hmm. What we can do then is um, uh, not provide consent, in which case the mayor just has to provide another yeah. Um, and again, some of it is the importance of the role of those committees. Mm -hmm. You know, to re to reinforce yeah. to the the applicant that we we feel like these are really important committees, and you have important decisions to make uh -huh. and recommend. You know, and they they make those decisions. You know, certainly this committee while it's making recommendations on compensation, they're in fact recommendations. They they go other places. Yeah. We need to vote on it. Yeah. We, we'll ratify it. Right, so it. they recommend, we ratify but, but the, per, the permitting fine. boards, you know, it's a recommendation. The planning board makes the decision. The zoning board makes the decision. Uh, right, that doesn't come back to That us. doesn't come back to us. No. So that, you know, a board to make recommendations is one thing, but the, the permitting entities are very powerful things, mm -hmm. and I do think it's appropriate to hold those appointments yeah. in in a, in a, a, at a higher level than some of the other ones. I, I guess at first blush, that was my impression of this committee. That yeah. It has such an important charge, yeah. at least in, in many people's minds in mm -hmm. the city, um, that it does rise to that mm -hmm. standard, perhaps. You mean the ordinance committee? Uh, no, the, no, the, uh, the, the commission. Oh, this, the, this, uh, the, the, the compensation mm -hmm. advisory board. Mm -hmm. I think rises perhaps to the level of because it's it will never probably approve such a board again. Uh, well, no, they it have, have to. They have time. to. It's a actually, compensation advisor board. Yeah. yeah, it has to be appointed. It says by charter. There's a reference. Yeah, uh, it cycles through under charter, so it, it happens every on cycle. I can't remember how often, I remember but I've, I've actually every served. Ten years. Yeah, I served every on the last. So every ten years. years, we'll do it again. Yeah. And actually, but, the uh, last one, I don't know. The charter has changed. Such. I, the last one, I was a counselor when I served on the last one. So since then, the charter has removed any um, elected officials from that from that very board. Because uh, Marilyn Richards and I both served on that last one. We had to um, abstain from the actual mm -hmm. vote on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've spent a long time on this one. Do you want to make a motion we bring them in here because in your opinion it's important or not? Yeah, I would we like, should decide I, what we're going to do. I would like to make a motion that um, we Schedule issue the, uh, the, the invitation to all of them. And if they have circumstances that don't permit them to come, uh, I think they're, what they have submitted to the mayor is their public, is their public uh, statement in a sense. And if they wish to make another one, they can as well. So my, my motion is, is first to, to invite them all to appear publicly. And now, uh, uh, could I ask if, just to amend that a little, if someone indicates that they are not able to, um, could we use that time on the phone to um, ask whatever it is we would ask? And I'm still not clear what it is, because I've mm -hmm. not yeah. What are we going to ask them once they get here? Right, that's a separate question. Um, I don't know the answer to that. Is it appropriate, I guess, normally it is appropriate for us to have a private conversation with People, as long as we report the results back to the right. whole committee, is that yeah. the deliberation has to happen here? Oh, and, yeah. and just to be clear, you know, I'm yeah. not I'm not worried about it transgressing against the open meetings law. I just mean the perception of 
Mm -hmm. uh, in this particular instance, this is, maybe I'm putting too fine a point. This is, this is a new thing for us, so we'll bring them in and we'll try it out. So yeah, but there are, there are of the seven. Clearly, seven are not going to be able to come in on March 10th. Mm -hmm. So and we certainly can okay. do this in more than one meeting because it's not like these guys are supposed to get this job done by June 30th or anything. They don't. There's no particular start time for this. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, if, they, if we want to spread them out, we can spread them out. Yeah, I hate to create undue burden on anybody, but... Oh. And, if, and if you disagree, please... You know, well, no, I'm happy to err on the, the area side area. of your caution in this case, so... That's fine. Oh, why don't we take care of this piece, and then we still have the, the business of what do we do with them when, when we get them here. Mm -hmm. That's okay. still unclear with that. So, sure, uh, mm -hmm. I'll second. Okay, thank you. So, um... All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll support that. So, um, someone's going to call them all. Or do we, now, how? What's the process whereby they get invited? Do um, each of us call? Do we call? Does the chair call? Does Mary well, it, do? at this point, I think we should probably just write them and say you're invited to appear before the ordinance committee on such and such a date. Uh, please call to confirm or call them. Probably Mary in this case okay. to check in at the central location and say, I'll be there. Mary, you weren't at the, you weren't um, at the Appointments and Evaluations Committee, were you? No. Okay, so you don't know either. No. And we just have from your... Uh, from having been on there for a while. And no, when you say write them, do you mean an email, or do you mean a written letter? An email's because fine. I think an email. all of them, except for the very first person, have provided an email. She emails, but I think emails. No, email's fine. Just that we communicate with them and invite them to our next meeting. So does someone want to call the first person because she did not provide an email? Mm -hmm. no, well, we can certainly ask the mayor's office to. They they appointed her. They must know how to reach her. Well, I mean, there's phone numbers and there's her address, but there's no email. But you're saying it, an email to all the others yes. is enough. Yes, it's enough. Mm -hmm. So a written letter to her? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we could just we could just send her send her a letter, just the same email that we would send to everyone else, just and print it out on a piece of paper and put it in an envelope, I guess. Yeah, and then she'll get the same notice they do and can call in and confirm their availability. Okay, and then once they're here, again, we'll have seven people. So is there a process? We have to figure out now what kind of process would we be using? Could we ask them? Whoever would like to, like a Quaker meeting, whoever is moved to first speak, or do you want to do it, and how do you? They had, they had a, an opportunity to address us about anything they wanted to about their application. Okay. And then we literally looked at their application and, and asked any question we felt was appropriate based on that or any question we felt was appropriate based on their comment. Okay. There was no list of questions mm -hmm. okay. that went from applicant to applicant simply because this process happened for all kinds of boards, committees, commissions, and whatever. Okay. And so it wasn't like there was a an appropriate list of questions for that would cover all of them. Right. Um, so maybe we should just know that we're we should pretty much stay within the within the confines of the, the application, yes. the questions that are there. Mm -hmm. That seems in a way, it's just an opportunity for them to make a statement. I mean, mm -hmm. we could we could reach deep down in our souls and find some questions to ask, but we'd be reaching. You know, it's more like giving it giving them an opportunity to appear. You know, well, that's why I'm a little I'm a little wary of the question of, of even any other questions that stray from the application itself. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I think if we stick with that. That's typically what the process yeah. was. Right. Questions based off the application. And, you know, and again, these are the mayor's appointments. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to provide some level of due diligence. The question is how much? And there's enough and there's too much. And so certainly we don't want to put them through a ringer or make their life any more difficult for the goodwill of being willing to serve on a committee. So. Right. I, w I would face the same challenge if I were talking to him on the phone. I wouldn't know what to ask, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. well, this is the first time this has come to us, 
So we'll do a public one and get a feel for it, and then if we want to change the process on other ones, we can. And they might be confused, as confused as I was when I was asked to appear before the committee, to just say this is uh, part of the, this is an ordinance of the city that it says that all appointments have to be confirmed by the city council. We need to get consent, and so in order to do that, we just wanted to. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, and that's really what we did. Way, have a way, a means to get consent. Yeah. And okay. it was a, trying to hit a reasonable level of due diligence in consenting to the mayor's appointments. And you said that in your experience or knowledge, to your knowledge, there's never, has there ever been one that the council has denied the mayor? There, there was one on the Conservation Commission. It was a reappointment. And as I recall, the applicant withdrew from reappointment because there was a certain city councilor that was going to make it very difficult. And the applicant chose to withdraw. Wow. Uh, but that was not as a result of any action on the part of this committee, it was going to happen at council. So, and the applicant chose not to go through with that. Okay. So, but that's the only one I, I know of that didn't mm -hmm. proceed. Mm -hmm. Because frankly, there are times, um, and, and perhaps the more appropriate place, you know, I know the mayor has chosen not to reappoint people. Yes. You know, because either they were not consistently attending and caused problems with quorum and the committee doing their business, mm -hmm. or the mayor felt that they were, you know, inappropriate to, to the public or to citizens and not respectful of applicants and so forth. I mean, you know, when you think about it, we, we do this all the time, but for a citizen to come in and stand up there and ask for a permit or a this or a that, they're pretty nervous doing it. And they're very, you know, it's a scary thing if you don't do it all the time. And there have been occasions when board or committee members have not been respectful of, you may not agree or support their position, but you need to be respectful of them and try and explain your position in, in a very civil way. And I know on several occasions, different mayors have not reappointed people because they felt, you know, they're just, they're too opinionated and too disrespectful of the citizens that come before their board or committee. Yeah, they may show up, but I don't feel they, they're treating the applicants or the citizens, whoever it is, respectfully enough, and they just don't recycle their appointment when the time comes around, thank them for their service, yeah. and, uh, and move on. But um, Yeah, as you say, so we're happy we're not the U.S. Senate. We're not here to grill <laughs> possible appointees, nor should they feel threatened or, or put upon by coming, but they should be invited. Yeah, we're not, we're not reminding them of a statement they made 25 years That's ago. Right. After a couple of beers, you know that right. <laughs> now is going to, you know, you're not getting on the Supreme Court because of that. We don't go, we don't go to that point. And I suppose some of, you know, if if we ever had a mayor that didn't monitor the committees and wasn't and was just saying sure reappoint everybody, and we did run into a, a board member or a committee member that was disrespectful of the public or was doing something, you know, then there's our opportunity to weigh in. Mm -hmm. Luckily, the mayors of late have been pretty good about policing the boards and committees and talking to the chairs and talking to the department liaisons to see, you know, who's who's doing the job and, you know, who's appropriate and who isn't. So we haven't had mm -hmm. to do that. But right. I guess it's sort of, we're there in case that doesn't happen the way it's uh -huh. supposed to. Uh -huh. yeah. So the last one is amend 44-3. Oh, I have one more Oop. question. Will there be an issue for all, if these seven people show up, Will that have to be posted? No, because they're not yet appointed, right? No, and it just, and I'm just, it just gets that, posted the way it is. What I'm saying is, if they were already appointed, then they would represent a quorum yeah. of, the, of a committee that... Yeah, well, but they're not, they don't exist yet. Okay. So we don't have to worry about that. Okay. Yeah, okay. they don't exist yet. It just occurred to me. That's interesting. Maybe we uh, interview them and tell them to please run out of the room. <laughs> 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 uh, okay, you're, you're fine. Please. Well, they're not appointed until... <laughs> Until the final. Till the council votes. Right. Yeah. So right. they're not they're not appointed yet. Uh, so 44.3 accounts presented by the clerk with support of the city solicitor. 
Um, and did this go anywhere else? No, I found this and sent it to the city solicitor, and his supportive email was attached to it. Um, when, when the council changed a lot of the smaller ordinances mm -hmm. for the ordinance review committee, right? Um, it's not a, it's, if you look at the solicitor's email, he mm -hmm. pretty much agrees that it's not a huge problem, it's not really something he was looking for at the time we were doing the ordinance review, um, but because there no longer is a committee on rules, ordinance, and orders, mm -hmm. I felt that it was a good idea to take that out, which then results in the rest of it being renumbered. Um, so the city solicitor did agree that there were lots of ordinances that may have a sound basis when enacted but are no longer relevant. This is definitely one of them. In other words, there's no need for 44.3 accounts to be saying we're going to have printing done by a committee on rules, ordinance, and, and orders. There's no need for printing or bills to come to this committee, even with its new name. That's, that's all done by accounting, um, mm -hmm. human system, and so forth. It's not something that would have to come before the committee. Mm -hmm. well. And uh, and the city solicitor agrees, right? Mm -hmm. So it's kind so, of cleaning up. Yeah, I would. Um, part of the reason I found it is I do something that you may or may not be aware of. That every order and ordinance that passes the council has to index mm -hmm. and um, has to be processed a certain way and then put in the city clerk's vault. Right. So when I got to what we did back in December with this one. Mm -hmm. I noticed that um, that was still there. And then, Had never been done. Right. And as Alan says in his email, it wasn't really something they were looking for in the ordinance review committee, but he did agree that it's not necessary to stay in there. We did do a bunch of these after the charter passed. Yeah, sure. We did a bunch of... There's actually more to be done in the future. Yeah. But we did a whole bunch of uh, housekeeping stuff like this mm -hmm. and, and, and actually move things from ordinance to council rules and got rid of, claims. you know, well. Got rid of all the ordinances that mention claims. Yeah, right. and got rid of, you know, we still, the town crier was still in there, right? We got rid of him. Yeah. <clears throat> so we did all, all kinds of that, but there are still some stragglers around. So I'll move that uh, to the full council with a positive recommendation. Second. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good. So, do we have any new business? Uh, I wanted to just point out to you that I gave you a chart that, if you Tracking. recall, I kept in past years. Yep. Yeah. And I'll update this from time to time and give to all counselors. Um, but you do still technically have the middle street. Yep. We one carry of the those over. Is still technically in this committee. And. You don't really have the vibrant sidewalks. Right That's at council. Here. That's at, That's at social services. It's actually at Edloo. It Ed never Luke. was referred to social. But it's on their agenda. Yes, it is. Okay. At the request of a counselor. Okay. But it was never referred to. I understand. So. Uh -huh. It's not really at that committee, in other words. They can discuss it. They can discuss it. Yeah. Right. But, but, really but a recommendation from that committee is not necessary. No. Not yeah. necessary, but yeah. likely forthcoming. Right. But mm -hmm. technically, it's in Edloo. It's okay. in Edloo. So if it's in Edloo, technically it would have to go from Edloo to here, here. if yep. Edloo finishes. Mm -hmm. Even though it's a resolution? Well, it got referred because it got referred. This was a list of anything that I got referred. I understand, but um, I guess my question is, anything that's referred anywhere comes to ordinance? Even if it's a resolution, see, uh, I'm not sure that it needs to come to ordinance. Because it's not, it's not an ordinance. Right. It's just a resolution. Right. It was referred there for the purposes of having a, a forum, a community yeah. forum, or well, so. Well, that's up to you because yeah. I don't think it we wasn't technically to. referred to this committee at all. Uh, I don't no. want it to come. But I think I don't think it needs to come yeah. in addition to this committee. 
Um, yeah. Well, if it's a resolution, it probably doesn't have to come back here. No. So. I mean, I think as it is, as we as we know, there's a little bit of a complication in that the council president had thought that it would be a good idea for it to be bandied around by the social services, which does make sense. I mean, given the nature of the the content, but. Um, I think that it would, as it was officially sent to Edlu, it was sent to economic development, mm -hmm. even though it's kind of more of a social services uh, related. Well, maybe because there was a land use component relative to benches. You would think that, but really it was because it was, a, it was because there was a a willing a willing a couple of counselors who said we would like to take this. And they're on it. Yeah. Who were at the time yeah. and no longer. So and technically, you, longer. you might have to rethink the sponsorship of that resolution because of what the city solicitor said at the last meeting. There were only four. There aren't five. You sure? There were five originally, but um, then Pamela Schwartz. Mm -hmm. So there were four. There's only four. And actually, that was one of them a council that's no longer on the committee? Nope. The four, four are still are there. Was it sent to the hearings, investigations, and practices? No. 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 <laughs> I don't think so, no, because it's, uh, I think it's actually going to be really, I, I, I think that social services is going to take a good stab at it and, you know, really revamp, I mean, go back to the drawing board and, and probably offer that because it's in, officially in Edlu, but it's really not the, the right place for it. So back to new business. Do we have any other other than that update? And this this will go throughout the term, mm -hmm. so we, we can keep track of where it comes in. It goes to the various committees. It comes to us. Where when it goes to council, when it gets voted up or down. So this will fill up and get <laughs> substantial as we go along. Okay. Nice. And you can see as our work. It's just sort of our flow chart for where our stuff is, and okay. it's very very helpful. Thank you. And then. Hopefully by the end of the session, it's all done. <laughs> <laughs> or you have to carry them all over. Yeah, we have to carry them all over. All right, so if there's no other new business, I think we've done everything we needed to do. Motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? I can't see it. It's 610. 610. Close enough, 610.